It's Friday, March 5th, and this is now on H&N. We haven't seen this level, um, certainly not in my lifetime. We'll take a look at what's being done to address the surge in anti-Asian hate crimes. He slashed me from cheek to cheek. A neighbor island update, Lanai and Moloka'i are on track to make COVID vaccines available to all residents. 16 and up. Very pleased. Lawmakers are expected to vote on the massive COVID rescue package this weekend. I'm Skyler Henry at the White House, where President Biden is hoping to get the bill passed in what would be his first legislative win in office. We can't afford one step forward and two steps backward. We've got these stories, plus the ear piercing technique being tested as a possible way to screen COVID infections. Those details are coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now on this Aloha Friday. Jonathan and Ashley here coming to you from the H&N Digital Center. Just seconds ago, really, the state released new coronavirus case numbers. That's right. Health officials are reporting 54 new cases today and two new fatalities. We'll have the breakdown for you by island on your H&N Digital platforms. Meanwhile, let's take you live to Washington, D.C. Here's a live video feed of the Senate floor. Now, the U.S. Senate is in the midst of a marathon amendment amendment voting spree as Democrats push to pass President Biden's American Rescue Plan. Now, the president is also closely watching the Senate vote outcome while hoping for his first legislative win. Skylar Henry reports from the White House. The Senate continues its hours-long so-called votorama with a final vote on the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan expected sometime over the weekend. We are going to power through and finish this bill however long it takes. We're about to watch one party ram through a partisan package on the thinnest of margins. Ahead of the vote, Democrats agreed to maintain federal unemployment benefits at $300 per week and extend them through September. $1,400 stimulus checks will phase out for single filers earning more than $75,000 and joint filers earning more than $150,000. Here at the White House, the focus also continues on the pandemic and recovery, with President Biden hosting a Friday afternoon roundtable on the American Rescue Plan and meeting with his economic team. We can't afford one step forward and two steps backwards. We need to beat the virus, provide essential relief, and build an inclusive recovery. Meanwhile, the director of the CDC says she will soon release long-awaited guidelines for those who've been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. We are making sure and taking the time to get this right. Dr. Walensky also urged everyone to double down on prevention measures such as mask wearing. Skylar Henry, CBS News, the White House. The state is expanding eligibility for COVID vaccines starting on Monday. Lacey Denise has those details. Hawaii residents 70 and up can now sign up to be vaccinated online at many health care providers. Vaccinations for this age group start on Monday. We checked the websites for the Queen's Health Systems, Hawaii Pacific Health, Kaiser Permanente, Adventist Health Castle, and Maui Health and others. They are all allowing seniors 70 and older to sign up for an appointment. The state health director also says vaccinations may open to people age 65 and up and people in phase 1C in just a couple of weeks. Here's how it will likely work. We're probably going to end up using age as a surrogate and then also carve out um, a few, you know, uh, very serious um, illnesses or conditions, we will probably just be um, expanding 1C and going through in reverse chronologic age. So where we're opening it up to 70 and older now, um, I anticipate once we hit 1C, it's 65 and older, and then we'll just keep backing it down and, and inviting more and more people. Phase 1C is a huge chunk of our population, about half a million people. It includes those 65 and up, people 16 to 64 years old with high risk medical conditions and other essential workers. For This Is Now, I'm Lacey Denise. With their small populations, Moloka'i and Lana'i are on track to have every willing adult vaccinated by the end of the month. 
The health department says it delivered nearly 6,000 doses to those islands. Lanai had an outbreak in October that infected more than 100 people. Molokai has had about 30. But the caseloads are at or near zero now, and officials want to keep it that way. We are protecting the people in Lanai and Molokai uh, very quickly, and, and they're getting vaccine at a higher rate than other communities. And again, it goes back to the fact that they don't have a lot of hospital support. Very pleased because many times we are like last in line. Lanai is holding another drive-in vaccination clinic on the 27th. The health department expects it will be open to all residents 16 and up. Unions and teachers are urging the Board of Education to reject a new contract for school superintendent Christina Kishimoto. Casey Lund has more on that. Some elementary schools like Wilson here in Kahala have been doing a combination of in-person and distance learning. Now yesterday's Board of Education meeting, the superintendent of schools, Christina Kishimoto, tried to clear up any confusion. She said March 22nd was not the target date to bring all elementary schools back to in-person classes. That's just the date of the beginning of the fourth quarter of the school year. She says sometime in this quarter is the goal to bringing all the students back to in-person classes. Now, this morning, we talked to parents and teachers about what this past year has been like, struggling through the challenges of learning online. Are you guys at your wits end? I mean, what's this year been like? I, I, it's, it's devastated me, really. I mean, my life is upside down. I'm, I'm finding my way through, but, um, you know, just talking to a lot of my friends, uh, you know, some of them are essential workers. And, you know, some of them are like stuck. And a lot of my friends don't have extended family. A lot of parents are leaving their kids at home because they have to work. Maybe they work in hospitals. Um, it's like a Sophie's Choice in a way. What were some of the hardest parts about connecting with kids through a screen? So um, as a teacher, the two biggest adjustments we had to make were engagement and connection. Um, my kids never turned on their video cameras. And they weren't required to. We weren't. We were uh, told we weren't. We couldn't require them to do that for a lot of legitimate reasons. But when I don't see them, I can't do all of those minute observational um, things that I do as a teacher to ensure that they're engaged in their learning. The other development that came out of the Board of Education meeting was the board's decision to postpone any action on extending the superintendent's contract. That for now is set to expire at the end of July. Reporting in Kahala, I'm Casey Lund. Now back to you. This week's federal jobs report is out and Wall Street is happy. The economy added 379,000 jobs last month. That's much more than economists expected. Investors responded with a jump in pre-market stock trading. February's unemployment rate also dropped slightly, down 6.2% from January's 6.3%. It was expected to remain flat. The unemployment rate reports how many people sought jobless benefits and does not reflect those who dropped out of the job market entirely. Anti-Asian hate crimes are on the rise, sparking action on many fronts. Nadia Romero takes a closer look at what's being done. Taking action to stop hate from coast to coast, a wave of action aimed at curbing anti-Asian hate incidents. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom approving $1.4 million in state funding to address the surge of violence. A chunk of that will go to initiatives like Stop AAPI Hate, which tracks these kinds of attacks. We haven't seen this level, um, certainly not in my lifetime. The Asian Advocacy Group says there have been nearly 3,000 incidents reported against Asians all across the country between March and December of last year. Essential workers, frontline workers are being verbally harassed and attacked um, and being blamed for COVID-19. Nearly 44% of those incidents were reported in California. Several attacks on elderly Asian Americans have been captured on camera. In San Francisco, this 84-year-old immigrant from Thailand died after he was pushed while on a morning walk. He never wake up again. I never see him again. A 19-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of murder and elder abuse in the case. Then there's Denny Kim, U.S. Air Force veteran who was beat up in Los Angeles. I remember when the assailants were uh, beating my face. I remember them telling me that they wanted to kill me. Also in Southern California, neighbors taking matters into their own hands, standing guard over this Asian-American family's home after they were the target of harassment. 
Meanwhile, in New York, 61-year-old Filipino-American Noel Quintana was attacked on a packed subway. He slashed me from cheek to cheek with a box cutter. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announcing a new push to combat racially motivated crimes, ordering city agencies to meet with Asian community leaders, and launching a new website where people can report incidents. The surge also sparking action from other organizations condemning the violence. African Americans and Asian Americans have had a long history of solidarity around civil rights issues in this country. Hundreds gathered in the Bay Area to call for solidarity and honor the victims, with groups like Californians for Safety and Justice joining the effort to tackle the issues together. We have to humanize each other, and I think that's what um, these rallies and opportunities for solidarity allow us to do. When one of us is attacked, especially when it's racially motivated, we are all less safe. I'm Nadia Romero reporting. A new CDC study links mask wearing with fewer COVID-19 deaths. The CDC research found in counties where states require masks, COVID-19 case and death rates slow down by 1.9 percentage points up to 100 days later. The study also found that in counties where states allow on-site restaurant dining, illness and death rates appear to speed up. For the same time period, the research said there was a 1.1% increase in deaths tied to eating at a restaurant. However, the analysis did not differentiate between indoor and outdoor dining. The study comes at a time when several states are expanding business capacity and lifting mask mandates. This report is a critical reminder that with the current levels of COVID-19 in communities and the continued spread of more transmissible virus variants, which have now been detected in 48 states, Strictly following prevention measures remains essential for putting an end to this pandemic. It also serves as a warning about prematurely lifting these prevention measures. Nearly 70% of Americans have been or plan to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Today, the Pew Research Center released a new survey of more than 10,000 adults across the country. It found that 19% of adults say they have received at least one dose of the coronavirus vaccine, and 50% say they plan to get vaccinated. Combined, that's 69%. That's an increase from Pew's study in November when 60% of adults said they plan to get vaccinated. So there's this Dutch inventor who's looking at a new way to test for coronavirus, and it's creating quite the uproar. Tina Kraus has the story new at noon. The unpleasant nature of a COVID test is enough to make some people flinch. Others can't help but scream. A method being trialed in the Netherlands requires people to let out a shout or a song inside an airlocked cabin to give inventor Peter Van Wees enough potential germs to test for COVID-19. If you are spreading and yelling and screaming, you're spreading tens of thousands of particles which contains the coronavirus. An industrial air purifier creates a whirlwind in the booth and collects particles to be analyzed. If someone is infectious with the coronavirus, the numbers of that specific uh, diameter will go way up. Three minutes after he hollered, Ismail James got some good news. He's told it's not COVID, just a cold. It's always very nice to scream um, when nobody can hear you, though. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think it's a good way of meditation as well. <laughs> the ear piercing technique is still being perfected. Until then, all that crying out can be used as COVID therapy. Tina Kraus, CBS News. Hmm. You and, and I would break out into song. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about the singing, but could you imagine being at TSA or something and scream for us? Right. Like, that's yeah. not going to work in every situation, I do not think. All right, guys, let's talk about another situation. That's the weather. Ooh. Look at it. Pretty gray out there. And I think that wet stuff's going to stick around for a little bit. Here's Guy Hoggy with the update. How's it on this Aloha Friday? All this moisture coming from a weak front that's dropping in now. You can see some spotty downpours as well. And this moisture will be hanging around through the weekend. Another shot of even more moisture is due in on Sunday coming up from the southeast. And we'll also have an excess uh, amount of trade winds. In fact, the trade is expected to get stronger 
over the weekend into the early part of next week when we could get wind advisories, maybe some spotty um, power outages as well. So cloudy periods today, passing showers, drier by the middle part of the day, and those winds running brisk and breezy. And again, they'll get stronger over the next several days. And of course, that means ocean conditions will be choppy. We've got a rise coming into north and west shores in the afternoon, mostly out of the north. It's going to be pretty big, but it's also going to be pretty choppy. Not all spots will be working. Some might be even washed out. And with those trade winds getting stronger, you can expect the east shores to be getting bigger over the next several days as well. So it's going to be cloudy and damp today, maybe some spots of sunshine in the afternoon for leeward sides. And that's going to be the case through tomorrow. And then those winds getting stronger through the weekend, especially windy on Monday and Tuesday. And that's when wind advisories could be posted. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. For the first time ever, Oahu's median house price has surpassed $900,000. That's despite a year-long pandemic and record high unemployment. So why is the housing market going the other way? Chelsea Davis has the analysis. Many thought the pandemic would cause the housing market to crash. It's been quite the opposite. Experts tell me the pandemic has proven people can work from home. So many homeowners now need to upgrade. High demand, low supply, and low interest rates. It's a triple threat that's causing Hawaii's booming housing market. We don't see an end in sight. A new report from Locations Hawaii says last month's condo prices are up 6%, selling for $457,000. The median price for a single-family home on Oahu rose by 20% since last year to $920,000. Numbers jaw-dropping for home buyers. Don't be discouraged because I think people look at it, they look at the median at night. But wait, that, that's just the median. That's not the, the lower end. And first time home buyers don't be discouraged. Homes can be quick to come by, averaging just 10 days on the market. Last month also saw the most home sales for the month of February since 2006. Local lawmakers are trying to strike a balance. House Speaker Scott Psyche says a couple of years ago, they allocated hundreds of millions of dollars to help finance affordable housing projects. But we felt that it was really important to provide funds to this agency so that they could, they could increase the inventory of affordable units. And so it's these kinds of projects that, that will help to make a difference. The boom is happening across the country thanks to low interest rates. While that normally can attract mainland real estate investors in the islands. A lot of people just think it's not local. It is. It's local. It's local people who already who already own homes because they've built so much equity. It's really a local business right now and uh, and there's a lot of competition. Real estate experts say part of the reason for the increase in median price is due to a high percentage of bid-ups. Roughly 47% of single-family homes and nearly 28% of condos were sold above the asking price. Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. Thank you, Chelsea. Time to look and see what's happening on those feeds, folks. Well, Porsche has unveiled some e-bikes. I know it doesn't oh. seem like something the automaker would be up to, but they are. It's to go along with their first ever luxury electric vehicle. Yeah, this might have to go on a, if you win the lottery list, really. The e-bike sport, which is meant to be rode on the road, will run about $11,000. Holy. Yeah. And the e-bike cross, which is off-terrain, would cost uh, only $8,500. <laughs> Each bike includes a motor that will power, power you along, and they'll likely be available a little later this spring. Oh, Portia. I won't even ask. Yeah. So for those of you who love Chipotle like I do, when you, you're eating one of their monster burritos, it's not uncommon for, to get some of that beautiful mess on your face. Well, the restaurant chain is embracing that by launching a makeup collection. That's right, Chipotle is partnering with cosmetic company ELF on the beauty line. You have a 12 color eyeshadow palette inspired by Chipotle ingredients like guacamole, rice, and salsa. The palette also comes with a coupon for free chips and salsa. Now there's also a lip gloss, an extra guac face sponge set, and a makeup bag that looks like the company's brown paper bag. The makeup is vegan and cruelty free. For our podcast listeners, really, it sounds a lot grosser than it really looks. <laughs> the colors are really beautiful, really. They really yeah. are. 
All right, guys, Twitter users, listen up, because if you've ever sent a tweet and then instantly regretted it, you're in luck. Today, Twitter confirmed that it's testing an undo send feature. Undo yeah. send feature. It would give users a window of time to retract or correct, correct tweets before it is officially posted. So many people need this. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, think about it. Before, before you tweet something, just take a moment and you know think about it do you really mean <laughs> yeah exactly mean it. <laughs> but here's the downside this feature could all be part of a subscription service oh. twitter is trying to do to increase its revenue goal yeah People that should be that. free for everyone twitter <laughs> yeah. please it should have always been like that this is a really cool story, you guys. This is some good news. So a Waikiki street performer who specializes in surprising people got a big surprise himself when he confronted a thief. Now, as you'll see, his response is nothing short of inspiring. Roy Ramey loves catching people off guard. That's him inside the fake bush, scaring people in Waikiki. It's a change of pace from his usual work on the street, impressing crowds as a break dancer. I saw the Bushman pranks and, uh, and, and the mannequin pranks. And I was thinking, oh, no one does it here in Hawaii. His good natured pranks draw people wanting to see Roy's next victim. Sometimes I get a really huge audience and they're just waiting, you know, on the side. They're all clapping when, when it happens and everyone's laughing and having a good time. But last week, one man out of the crowd saw that good time as a diversion and moved in to swipe Roy's tips. But then someone yelled, uh, he's taking money from your bucket. Roy stood up, saw the thief, and got ready to clock him. But what the man said next ended up catching Roy off guard. When he said he was hungry and he just wanted food, um, it made me realize too, because I used to be homeless at one point in time. And, you know, I, I worked my way back up. I, I understood what he meant, you know. Before working on the streets, this was his home. He says he's lucky he never had to resort to stealing. I was blessed every time. I mean, people would just give me food. Um, they, would, they would take me out to lunch. They would take me out to breakfast. If you do good, good things happen, you know. Roy offered the man a meal and something to drink, using the cash returned by the thief. Afterwards, he went back to work, scaring people for laughs and a little bit of money. It, this kid came up to me and he said, man, you deserve this. And when I went home, I emptied the bucket and it was a $100 bill that he gave me. Roy says he's not sure if it's karma or some kind of divine intervention, but there is one belief he holds above everything else. You can either choose to do the bad thing or do the right thing. And I just chose to do the right thing. Man, that is the way you want to end the yes, Friday, right? For and sure. Such an inspiring story. Yeah. Really got my Jonathan's waterworks going. Up. Oh my gosh, Josh. I love those type of stories. Yeah. Really, really do. Inspiring. Keep it up, <laughs> folks. Please talk, Ashley. <laughs> okay, so apparently there's another Fast and the Furious movie coming out, but fans will have to wait a little bit longer for that ride. F9 was supposed to make its debut in May 2020, but now it's set to open in theaters on June 25th. Other movies that were bumped last summer because of the pandemic are also being rescheduled for this summer. I didn't even know there were nine. Yeah, I was just about to say <laughs> F9. Nine? Movies. Really? Well, apparently this is like Ian Schering's favorite franchise yes. or one of them. So he was, when I said I haven't watched all nine, it was like, he looked at me like I was what? crazy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, F9 coming this summer. And speaking of films, a new documentary is opening in New York and LA this weekend with more theaters throughout March. The Truffle Hunters is a documentary about Italian men in their 70s and 80s who search for elusive truffles with their cherished dogs. And they deal with climate change and deforestation as they use hunting secrets passed down through generations. Now it's a short list on the Oscar nominations. Yeah, it sounds boring, but I've heard amazing <laughs> things about it. You guys, happy Aloha Friday. Woohoo! Have a good one.